Good morning, lady bosses. So happy to have you here today. Like always, we'll wait a few minutes because a lot of you signed up, so we'll wait until at least a few people hop on. And you know, I've never had this happen, but man, we are having some threatening looking skies. And I don't know, my mom called me this morning, said something about bad weather and tornadoes. Growing up in Southeast Pennsylvania, who the heck grew up ever being fearful of tornadoes? And boy, it's becoming a regular thing. I'm starting to think if I had a dollar for every time I had to hide out in the basement over the past year, um, well, I couldn't really retire, but still, I can't believe how often I have to run to the basement. Somebody's here, say hi, I'm not sure who you are. So anyway, I don't know, if the weather ever knocks me out, I'll just have to try and get on, and boy, if it gets really bad, we'll have to reschedule, but I think we're good for now. I see a little picture pop up. Oh, Barb, hey, how are you, Barb? Somebody else is here too, but I'm not sure who, but nice to have you, Barb. Nice to have you both. I don't know who my other lady boss is, but I'm happy you're here. So we'll wait a little more. Barb, are you having threatening skies too? I'm not sure what's going to happen today, but um, I don't know. I heard a little bit about the T word. Hey, Timmy. Happy to have you here. Four of you. Okay, we'll wait just a little longer because I feel like, I don't know, we had at least a dozen maybe signed up. Beverly, hey, how are you today? Nice to have you. Good to see you all. I am so excited in this group. You ladies have been so awesome. You've been so connected and so encouraging in the group. I love how you've been talking to each other and encouraging each other. Um, that's what it's all about. We are always going to be better together. So, so excited to see you guys interacting the way you are because we all need our other each other's support. And I'm just so excited to see you doing that. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Okay, we're up to five of us. Listen, we're going to get started. And just if you missed any of the past or if you if you were on live for previous previous um, sessions, go back and listen if you missed the beginning. Just listen to the first few minutes. You may have missed something important. So, okay, Darlene, Amy, hey, ladies. Okay, let's get rolling. Awesome. Eliminating distractions, squirrel complex. Anna Maria, hi. I don't even have to guess how many of you suffer from squirrel complex. Probably a large majority of you. It's a really tough thing. So listen, think about your most successful people. Think about your big achievers. They are very, very focused. Probably because they're not getting distracted, right? <laughs> Wrong. No, of course they're getting distracted. They get distracted like everyone else. But what's the difference? Why do they become so successful? It's simple. It is so simple. Not simple to do, but simple to tell you. They have a very clear vision and they have a very clear plan, okay? You can't have one or the other. If you have a plan but no vision, then your plan is not going to be important because you don't have that vision pulling you forward. If you have the vision but you don't have the plan, then it's a pipe dream. It's nothing. So you have to have both. So, you know, a lot of people just want to work for somebody else. They want to clock in and clock out because they don't want the stress of being an entrepreneur. They just want to go home at five o'clock and forget all about work until the next morning and not think about it on the weekends. And if that's for you, that's fine. But that's not who we are in this group. For the most part, we're female entrepreneurs. So we want more. And we're here because we want to grow and we want to learn more and we want to be better, right? So that's where it has to start. It's got to be a vision and a plan. Good morning, Cindy. So anyway, your vision, your vision has to be, I just thought of this analogy the other day, and if you heard it somewhere before, I don't know, maybe two people thought the same thing, but for now it's my idea. Your vision has to be a humongous, strongest magnet you can even imagine. And here's the reason, because, okay, just suppose like your, your vision, suppose you need to lose weight, or no, you've just been diagnosed pre-diabetic, and that's scaring the crap out of you. That becomes a huge magnet. So that when you are walking through the kitchen and you see a box of donuts on the counter, you start to look toward those donuts, but the magnetic force of those donuts is nowhere near as great as the magnetic force of your vision that's going to zip you right back. Okay, imagine trying to push a magnet over to something else, but it always gets sucked back by the bigger magnet, right? So your vision has to be a really strong magnet because everything, everything is here. If it's not between your ears, if it's not really what you want and it's not really big, you're going to keep getting distracted too easily. So you're right, Beverly. You have to refocus on your plan, but you have to write it down. You have to put it on a board in front of you. It has to be so clear that it is this magnet that is driving every action you take during the day. Because if it's not that big, 
then you're not going to get rid of squirrel complex. It's just not going to go away. So here's another thing to think about. If your business, you know, your entrepreneurs, if the business that you're working is not something you need to do financially, okay, maybe, the, maybe you have no financial need and you're doing what you're doing as a hobby. Your vision from a financial standpoint is not going to be as great. So if you really want to grow that business, you've got to dig really deep to find a reason that's big enough to become that big, strong magnet. You got to write it down. And I'm going to have a whole session sometime on finding your vision because you have to learn how to go deep. You can't just say, well, I don't want to work for anybody else. It's got to go deeper than that. It's got to be so deep that it does become that big force that pulls you away from everything else and keeps you focused. So if you're treating this just as a hobby, don't expect that it's going to be anything any bigger than a hobby and don't expect big success. But if you want success, you've got to find a reason that's strong enough to keep you focused. Okay. Now, the reason that eliminating distraction is so important is this. And if you remember nothing else, remember this. Okay. We talk about multitasking. You realize multitasking is not a reality. Multitasking does not exist in the truest form of the word. If you are listening to me right now, you cannot be reading a book at the same time and comprehending both. Think about it. Think about watching a show on TV and it's a, it's a really deep show. And you know, if you look away a minute, you're going to lose it, but you really have to stay focused on it and you get a notification on your phone and you go to check it out and Ooh, real quick, you want to respond. Well, what happens? What do you do? You go back to the TV and you rewind it, right? Because you totally missed what they were saying. You couldn't do both things at the same time. So we don't multitask. That's not even possible. You know what we do? Here's another thing I made up. <laughs> we many task. We don't multitask. We many task. We do a lot of things at the same, not at the same time, but we jump from one thing to another. Okay. You're in the middle of this. Oops. An email just dinged on your computer. Let me go check that real quick. Oops. Now I'll, I'll get back to my project and oops, there's another notification. Listen, people, we go into job interviews and we put that on our resume like it's a strength, like I'm a great multitasker. Folks, you're not, that's not a thing to be proud of. And I'll tell you why. There have been studies on it. Switch tasking. I like that same idea. You're switch tasking. You're not multitasking. That's perfect, Cindy. But here's the deal. You are 20% less effective when you are jumping around. That's how much less productive you are. And they've done studies on people who work 40 hours a week and they've determined they actually lose 11 hours a week by switch tasking. Now, listen, every one of you on here says that time is a problem. You wish you had more time. If you're not focusing on the jobs you're doing, can you really afford to be throwing away up to 11 hours a week? Because as soon as you learn to focus and work on one thing at a time and get it done without distraction, the quicker you're going to find more time to do the things you never have time to do. So if nothing else, every time you switch over, remind yourself how much time you are throwing in the toilet because of the fact that you're not staying focused on one thing. That is huge. That is so critical. And we don't have that kind of time to throw away. So here's another thing. If it needs to get done, it needs to be on your planner. We talked about planners last week, digital, paper, whatever. Whatever you're using as a planner, though, Number one, you can have the fanciest planner in the world, but if you're not using it, just throw it away. It's just like totally, you know, not necessary if you're not going to use it. You have to make a plan, but you have to work it or it's not worth anything. But anything that's important and has to get done has to get on your planner. You have to be looking at it through the day. And on my planner, I shared with you last week, the important things are all in green. So when I'm looking at my planner during the day, I know I have to get the green things done. If I do nothing else that day, but I get the green things done, it was a win. So do that. And here's another clue. You got your green things that have to get done. Granted, they're all not going to be things you love to do. So look at them. Look at the thing you dread the most and do it first. Get it out of the way because if you don't get it out of the way all day long, you're going to be doing your other work, but in the back of your mind is going to be, oh man, I got to get that done by the end of the day and it's going to nag at you. So get the tough thing done first, because you know what? It's going to be smooth sailing after that. Do the hard stuff first. There was a book. I never read it, but I heard about it, but it's based on this principle called eat that frog. Same thing. You know, you got, you, if you got to eat, eat a frog, I don't know, the ugly one or the whatever, eat the ugly one first, something like that. But the point is do the hard stuff first and the rest of the day is going to be easy. 
important tasks in pink. That's great. Somehow designate your important tasks, Michelle. You're right because they have to get done. That's the most important thing. Okay. Now listen, our struggle is different than a lot of people. Um, it's different, but it's not unique. Uh, we have a lot of struggles because a lot of us are working out of our homes. Now it's not to say that people who work in offices don't have struggles with distraction because I worked in an office for 40 years. And let me tell you, I would stay at work for an hour at the end of the day when everybody left and I would get more done in that hour than I had gotten done all day because all day long you're getting phone calls or people who are popping in to ask you a business question, but an hour later you're talking about what they did over the weekend. You waste so much time. There's so many distractions in an office, but the distractions at home are different and they're tough in a different way. So you need to either eliminate them or you have to reduce them. So let's talk about some of the distractions you really, really try to, um, you have to overcome at home. Let's see, Barb says her push-ups. <laughs> That's awesome. The hardest thing to do is her push-ups, so she does them at the beginning. And same thing, do the tough stuff first. Okay, the distractions in your house. The TV, right? That could be a big distraction. So make a rule with yourself that when you're home working, if nobody else is there, don't turn the TV on. Don't even, I mean, when I started working at home, it took me a long time to build some discipline, some self-discipline. And I would get up in the morning, and a lot of you have heard this, I grab my coffee and sit down and think, I'm gonna watch Good Morning America while I relax. I'm not the morning person, so you know, I'll relax for an hour and then I'll get to work. And then suddenly it was four o'clock and I had to quick get up and go make dinner because that easily I got sucked in and it sucked the whole day away from me. So don't even turn TV on there. You might say, oh, I just want the background noise. No, no. If you want background noise, turn some music on. Do not have the distraction of TV because believe me, if a headline occurs, whatever, you're going to be distracted. You're going to watch TV. So do not turn it on. Number one, housework, laundry, right? You're working. You walk into the kitchen to grab a cup of coffee and, oh, there's about five dishes in the sink. Let me get them done real quick. Oh, let me wipe off that counter. And oh, okay, let me, you know what happens? You get sucked in and before you know it, you're lucky if you're getting back to your desk an hour later. Laser sharp vision. Vision so big, it's a magnet. The magnet of that, those dirty dishes is not gonna be as strong as the magnet of what you need to accomplish. So you're gonna get your coffee, you're gonna go right back to your office. An easy way to deal with that is whether it's housework, laundry, you might think, oh, you know what? Let me just throw a load of wash in. I can throw that in and get back to work. But again, now you're switch tasking. You're wasting valuable production time and throwing time down the toilet because you're switch tasking. Because yeah, you're gonna do it, but a half an hour later, gotta run down, throw it in the dryer. Now I gotta go down and fold it and put it away. Listen, we're talking about planners. It is so important to have a plan. Schedule when you're going to do your laundry and when you're going to do your housework. Okay, I do my laundry on a weekend. I'm not tempted to do it during the week unless something catastrophic happens and you have to, you know, the dog pees on a blanket or something, that's different. But if I see laundry during the week, I'm not even tempted to do it because like, no, that's my weekend job. So I can just walk right away from it. So have a plan for when you're gonna do those things that distract you. I mean, we even talked about TV. I don't talk, I don't watch TV until about 9.30 at night and then I'll watch TV and totally relax. But have a plan for when you're gonna do those things because they are important but they can't, they can't creep into your time that you need to get your work done and be productive, right? Okay, now listen, this is like, this is huge. This is so huge. And most of you are gonna fight me on this or you'll listen and you know, you'll, you'll nod and all this, but you won't do it. But you don't understand how much time you're losing from your notifications, emails, private messages, text messages. You're working, you're working on your computer. And the email pops up and you can see the preview of what the email is and which magnet's going to be bigger. Are you going to think, oh, let me go answer that email real quick. Turn them off. Do not allow your emails to pop up on your screen while you're working and turn your notifications off on your cell phone while you're working. Actually, you could even turn your phone on off. You really, if you don't have that focus, ladies, all I can say to you is every single time you're distracted by one of these things, remind yourself how much time you're throwing away and you don't have time to throw away. So if you have a chunk of time, you say, I'm going to work. Another thing we're going to talk about later is time blocking. I got some great ideas for different kinds of time blocking, 
But if my time to work is, say you're going to work from 9 to 12 in the morning, do not let anything interfere with that. And do not let your notifications distract you from that. Because you might have a big magnet here, but if these little magnets weren't trying to draw your attention away, wouldn't it be better if they just didn't even exist? So just turn them off. There's no email. There's no message that's going to be so important that it can't wait an hour or two or four or whatever. People can get you. We still have things. Okay. We don't all have landlines, but we do have telephones. If something's an emergency, somebody will know how to call you. But somebody sending you an email, somebody sending you a text message, 99.9% .9 of the time, it is not going to be so critical that you have to stop what you're doing to respond. You're losing your focus simply by looking at the preview. And here's the deal. Here's why you lose so much time. Because when you've looked away and now you come back, there is time to refocus on what you're doing, remembering where you were, getting back into that groove. And seriously, studies have been done. You are 20% less productive. You could be throwing hours and hours away every week because you're jumping around. So turn off the notifications. That is like the biggest, most critical thing that is robbing you of the most time today because we're being bombarded by, by, by those things everywhere. Amy, that's good. I know a lot of your businesses. Let me scroll that down so I can see it again. Social media is more me responding to comments and posts in the groups. I'm selling my products and that's important, but have a set time to do that. Don't let that creep in when you're in the middle of an editing project. If you're in the middle of an editing project, protect that time, put a box around it and don't let anything distract you. Okay. Even phone calls. If your phone rings, look, I don't even, I don't answer my phone, this or my cell phone. I'm looking at my cell phone. If I don't know who it is, because you know what, if it's important to leave a message and I can call back later. So don't even answer if you don't know who it is. And there are only two calls I answer during the day. And that's my mom because my mom's 85 and I can quickly say, Hey, I'm in the middle of something. Can I call you back? But if she needs something, if she's worried that I don't know if I should go to the hospital for the, you know, I don't fool around with that. I will answer my mom all the time or my husband because we run a business together too. And sometimes it's critical, but I can immediately get off the phone with them. It's still the distraction, but I recognize that some things could be critical, but 90% of it's not folks. Not, protect yourself from the distractions when you're working on things or you're never going to be as productive as you can be. And the more productive you are, the more time you will create. And the more you'll have time for the balance you need in your life to enjoy the things you want to enjoy and to re, you know, refresh yourself and just, again, have that balance and focus on the things that are most important to you. Okay. Now, another area to think about is you have to make sure that your workspace is in a place where you're working away from the distractions. So like I said about TV, don't sit in the living room, work in the living room with TV on, you know, or if you've got people home, you've got family, husbands, whatever. My husband's home sometimes during the day. And if he's home, the Western channel is on TV all day long. <laughs> that's why I don't watch TV till 930 at night because that's when he goes to bed. <laughs> but I can't sit there and try and work with TV on and all that. So I'm not going to sit in my living room and work. Or don't sit in the kitchen at work if you have people home and that's where they're hanging out. So you need a private place. You need a place where you can focus and be productive. So if you have an office, that's great. Go in and close the door. If you just have a room, go in and close the door. And if you have people home, talk to them, ask them to respect that time. Don't even ask them, expect them to. This is important to you. So I'm sure it's important to them. And just say, I have to focus on this time. So don't interrupt me unless somebody's bleeding and we have to go to the ER, please. <laughs> and they won't. I mean, this, this Tuesday morning time slot, you know, my dogs are a couple rooms away, so I think they're going to be okay. But I've asked my husband, like, try not to be around for this half hour because the dogs will go crazy and they'll be nuts and you'll be outside and doors. It's, it's chaos. So he goes and does something else. But he respects that because I need this time to be a time when I can focus and you don't have to listen to all that in the background. If you don't have a place like that at home where you can just really have a quiet space and work, then go somewhere. I know so many people who on a regular basis go work at Starbucks, go to a little local cafe, but be careful that you don't go to a cafe that's frequented by your friends all the time because then you won't get anything done. You got to go to a place where nobody knows your name. Okay. In this case, nobody knows your name. 
but go someplace if you have to. And a lot of people find that they can be way more productive outside of their house. So figure out where it is you need to work, but really, really find a place to focus, to be productive and protect that time because it will create more time for you. That's what we're all about is figuring out. I've been, <laughs> Faith, just stopped out for a phone call I've been waiting for. Can you say distraction? <laughs> okay, but see, that was important. And believe me, I'm not saying there aren't important things that we have to respond to, but again, 99% of the time, you don't have to. If you're not waiting for a phone call, then shut it down, ladies. Shut it down and get your, your stuff done. <laughs> okay, now listen, here's, here's a way you can think about it. Again, it's all between your ears. So here's the mindset you can put yourself in to really make this successful. Give your job or your work, whatever it is you're doing, your, you know, whatever it is that you're working to find balance on, whether it's your job, your family, whatever, give it the same level of dedication that you would give to a boss if you were working for someone else as though they're watching you and assessing you all the time. If you're working for somebody and you're sitting at your desk and they're standing there watching everything you do, and assessing everything you do, you know that you're gonna be on your A game. You're gonna be giving it your best, 100%, right? Have the integrity to give that to yourself. You know, we're so quick to give to others, but we, we just don't always give ourselves what we need. Realize that what you're doing is important. And it might not be important to anybody but you, but who cares? It's important. So give yourself, show yourself the same respect that you would show an employer who is paying you to do a job for them and expecting you to, to definitely work at a, at a certain level. Give yourself that same respect. So in closing, I wanna remind you, remember, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. If you want something to be different, you've gotta start doing things differently. And I hope you really take this seriously because you know, just remember the big things, make your vision the big magnet. That's number one, it's gotta be the big magnet. Remember, every time you're distracted, you gotta start having a conversation with yourself. Every time you're distracted, how much time am I throwing away? I don't have time to throw away. If anything, I need more time. So I can't throw away the time I have, I need to create more. And then remember, be respectful, give yourself the same respect you would give a boss. Work at your absolute best for nobody but you. That's what I've got. Any of you have questions before we wrap it up? You guys are awesome. I'm so happy to be doing this with you. And I love all your input too. You're welcome, Vicki. Cindy said, God is watching. You know, again, give yourself that, that respect. Okay, ladies, this is awesome. Now listen, if you forgot, if you missed the beginning, you came in late, watch the replay. There might just be a little bit in the beginning that's a help to you. So uh, thanks for coming. Our topic next week is on stress. Okay, you got two choices with stress and we're gonna talk about what they are, but I'll be posting the invite on Thursday and hopefully we'll see you then. So thanks ladies, have a great day, Cindy. I'll love this day as if it were my last. Good advice to everybody. Have a good one, see ya.